Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 29th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Apple today released its usual updates for pretty much everything. There are updates for macOS, iOS, VisionOS, watchOS, as well as tvOS. Some of these updates are available for older versions of the operating systems. With macOS, it goes back two versions back to macOS Ventura 13 and 14 are being covered in addition to the current version 15. iOS is going back one version to iOS 17. This update, of course, is also a big feature update for iOS 18 and macOS 15. It adds the new AI feature set that was sort of highlighted for these recent versions of the operating system. There is no security patch only release for iOS 18 and macOS 15. However, the updates for the older operating system versions, they are just security updates and they will not get you any of the newer features. I counted a total of 67 vulnerabilities being patched here across the different operating systems. None of them is currently being exploited. I didn't really see any sort of patch now style vulnerability. A lot of the vulnerabilities are actually lock screen vulnerabilities. I I think it was about half a dozen or so of them, uh, which I thought uh, was a little bit interesting. And what this often comes down to is that if you're enabling certain features to be available on the lock screen, they are not properly access controlled. It's usually best practice to limit what you are exposing on the lock screen. And then of course, keeping your devices under your physical control is always preferred. Also a number of vulnerabilities that essentially come down to one application being able to see another application's data. iOS in particular is supposed to sandbox all of these applications. That has often failed in the past and still fails occasionally. Here my recommendation is, well, be careful what applications you're installing, the less applications you install, the less likely you have a malicious application that may take advantage of any of these vulnerabilities. And in the second diary today, Jan published an update on HTML attachments. HTML attachments have been going around for a while. They're often a little bit underestimated. Within the email itself, HTML is usually restricted, like as far as JavaScript and such goes. But uh, once you download and open an HTML attachment uh, in your browser, it often gains additional powers in particular when it comes uh, to uh, JavaScript. And that's exactly what's uh, being exploited here. This HTML attachment once opened tricks uh, the victim into entering uh, their password, which uh, then is being exfiltrated via the Telegram API. All of this is self-contained with HTML and JavaScript in the file that is being delivered as an attachment. Of course, of course, outright blocking HTML attachment is probably not going to go over too well with your users, even though there is a distinct difference between multi-part MIME emails that have text and HTML that's usually displayed inside the email client and separate HTML attached files whose content is not displayed in the email client. So you may be able to play around with this a little bit, but uh, yes, users sometimes legitimately send each other HTML files. And connections to Telegram, you definitely do want to keep an eye on. Yes, uh, there are some sort of legitimate use of Telegram, but for the most part in business environments, probably not an application that you would like your users to use. Then we have an interesting method uh, to bypass some of the guardrails around ChatGPT that are supposed to prevent it from creating malicious code. Marco Figueroa did uh, publish a blog post where they demonstrated that all it takes is to post a hexadecimal encoded string and then essentially ask ChatGPT 4.0 to 
execute the prompt encoded in that string. Uh, this uh, bypasses the guardrails uh, being set up in order to prevent ChatGPT to write malicious code. And uh, well, I guess the reason for this may be that uh, the guardrails are really just some simple signatures that are being uh, configured here and not necessarily taking advantage of the full capabilities of uh, that model. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.